and brew my Christmas beer tomorrow. So uh, here are all the ingredients for you. It's a recipe from Greg Hughes, one or two minor substitutions. I've got some pale malt, some biscuit malt, some caramunic malt, crystal malt, uh, wheat malt, carafa one malt. These are candy crystals that I've never used before, but look quite festive in their own right. And then for a bit of spicing up for the Christmas feel, I've got some cinnamon. I'm going to put some ginger in, which is an addition from his recipe, and some star anise, which uh, is quite Christmassy, isn't it? Little stars there. So a very malty brew, lightly hopped. I can put the hops in here uh, with a few spices just to give a bit of extra seasonality to it. So we'll be back when we're mashing. It's eight o'clock, the uh, grandfather's at the mash temperature. So uh, let's start the mash in. I've had the uh, grandfather on a timer overnight so that it was heated up and ready to go for me as soon as I came down this morning. Uh, you'll see from the controller we're at 68, the mash temperature I'd say is actually 67, the strike temperature is slightly high but it'll come down. I'm making a Christmas ale so it's going to be very malty. Probably needs a bit of residual sweetness. So the recipe called for a 68 degree mash. Normally I would mash it at 65, uh, 67 degree mash. Normally I would mash it at 65, but the most people that are into their mash chemistry will know that a slightly higher mash temperature is going to give us more of those long chain sugars, less fermentable sugars, more residual sweetness and body. And that's no doubt what uh, Greg's going for in this recipe with that. Mash temperature. I'll get this all mashed in and then I'll be back. The mash is on and circulating nicely. The temperature is just settling down now. We're a little bit low. Look, well, that will come up in a second as it circulates. So we're going to let it mash for 60 minutes and in the meantime let's talk about uh, hot water heaters. The main mash is completed now and I'm just doing the mash out so I increase the grain farther to 75 and uh, we'll give that 10 minutes and while that just happens let's talk about hot water heaters because grandfather have just released their hot water heater. I needed one of course before then so uh, this is mine so I thought I'd tell you about it and we can think about value and, and how the grandfather was looking. So this is a bulk standard what we would call a Burko boiler. I got it off eBay. I was bidding on second hand ones but I discovered that I could get a new one for about the same price. This was £72 I think. It's a 30 litre boiler. It just has a heater control and a tap and that's it as it comes and I use that quite happily for my first few brews. I would put the water in, measured with a jug to the right volume, swish a thermometer in the top and off I went. The thing that began to annoy me was that um, the temperature would drop of course, this can't hold it at exactly the right temperature. So I'd have to keep heating it up again and testing it with the thermometer periodically. So the first modification I made was to put a um, temperature sensor in from the guys at uh, Brew Builder Co UK. It's around the back, this is the cable from it here. And it just plugs into one of my STC 1000 temperature control units. Uh, and then I just dial up the sparge at water or water temperature that I need and off it goes. So you can see here the boiler's plugged into the heater socket. Here's the control unit, it's flashing at around 75 and it holds it very happily at 75 degrees for as long as I want and however much or little water there is in there. A couple of days ago the last bit of finesse I added was to put this sighting tube on which again was from Brewbuilder Co UK. I've marked it up with litres. 
it's just a nicety really, it's not that essential. Uh, but it does make it quicker for filling up and seeing where you are when you're sparging. And it allowed me to set the zero here because actually I need to leave some water in it to keep the sensor covered. So my zero point's here and then I can measure easily from there and get the right sparge volume going. And then I'll just use a little bit left for, for cleaning up and so on. Um, and that, that works really well. But, it's probably, well it has cost me more altogether than the grandfather hot water heater has done. I think that's 82 pounds I think. This was 72 for the boiler. Then you've got the STC controller, the sensor, the sighting tube, whereas the grandfather one comes with sighting tube. I believe it controls the temp water temperature that you want. I haven't used one. Um, this is 30 litres, the grandfather one's 18 litres I think, so it is a bigger boiler and you could double it up for boiling if you wanted to for any reason. Um, so there you are, I think I'd look seriously at the grandfather one now, but I don't know exactly how the temperature control one works on the grandfather. If you've got an STC anyway, STC unit anyway that you've built, then uh, the sensor, the sensors are about 89 pounds I think, I can't remember, so not that much, and as long as you're confident drilling through this and fitting it, I think that STC combination and boiler is a really good set up and works very well for me. So, there you go. Sparging now. I don't use the tap on the boiler, as you can see. It's easier to just ladle it out of the top, but the top's a bit slow, I find, really. My uh, control unit's keeping my Barge temperature for me, which allows me to get on and barge as quickly as I can. Seems to be running through quite well. As usual for me, I've set the grandfather straight to boil as I sparge so it can be heating up. I've never had a problem so far with it getting close to boil before I finish sparging. And uh, we'll be back in 20 minutes or so and we'll get boiling. 60 minutes into the boil now, got a good uh, healthy boil going now. As you can see, it's time to add the spices for this Christmas brew. First of all, 65 grams of uh, root ginger, fresh root ginger that I just coarsely grated. That's going in. And I've got 10 grams of star anise, which is a sort of aniseedy spice, and 10 grams of cinnamon bark, not ground cinnamon. That's going in. Now I've put those in a bag because I want to fish them out after 10 minutes. I don't want them steeping in there throughout the whole um, cooling period because I think that might be a bit too much. So, 10 minutes and then we can start the cooling. We're cooling now. And the water is coming through at... Nineteen degrees, so I can actually increase the flow a bit. A little bit faster. That's coming through our twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. Seven, twenty-eight. It's getting a bit warmer than I like, so I'm going to slow it down a bit. Tap touch. Turn it through that. Twenty-seven. Twenty-six. 26 and a half, 26, it's a good compromise. Let it go like that for a while. Right, we're ready for pitching. The wart's cooled enough. The yeast for this brew is a London Ale yeast, WLP013. They come in these 
funky uh, test tube things from um, White Labs. You can just pitch them straight in, but I tend to start them always here in some um, just a starter made from dried malt extract. Got about a litre dried malt extract in there. I'm going to shake it up to get all the yeast roused from the bottom. Nearly there. There we are, I think that'll do us. That can go in. Get a good rousing and final aeration. And then it can go into the brew fridge. This recipe calls for a 22 degree fermentation so I've got my temperature controller there set to 22. It's slightly low at the moment because I've had the door open. I'll tell you about the brew fridge another day. This is the first brew that I've done since I've had it. Fairly standard sort of setup that everyone does. I've got an STC 1000 temperature controller there. And inside I've got some of my Black Death Imperial Stout conditioning, and there's the uh, the brew that we've just done, and there's a fan in the bottom there just to keep the air moving around. And in the door, got what is in effect a greenhouse, small 60 watt greenhouse heater, and that will just give me the 22 degree fermentation that I need 24 hours a day. <laughs> 